We've all heard how we should be trying to tell stories with our photos. A photo that has a story is more powerful, more thought-provoking and more interesting. However, what is a story and how on earth do we go about telling it? This video is going to be the first of a two-part series where we will cover everything you need to know. Specifically in this first video, I will share with you a very practical and easy to follow approach that's designed to just get you going. And also this video is sponsored by Squarespace, but more on them later on. There are many different interpretations of what story actually means. However, my opinion is as follows. A photo that tells a story is also a photo that gets you, the viewer, to ask questions about what is happening and why it's happening within the image. For example, if we look at the photo of the girl in the New York subway, we can ask, why is this girl hiding? Who is she hiding from? The person that she was probably hiding from, did they get onto the uh, subway and the subway is now moving off? And who is the girl on the subway looking at the camera or at the girl? By asking all of these questions, we're trying to figure out what's the story behind this photo. A photo with a story is also one that makes you feel something when you look at it. That feeling could be one of happiness, sadness, warmth, or any other emotion. For example, this first photo feels very cold, dark, and moody. It makes you feel cool and cold looking at it. It makes you feel like you're in the winter, maybe somewhere in Europe, uh, late at night. And then when you see the person there, the yellow light, it does have that cinematic night moody feeling and then that can evoke those feelings within you when you remember of you being in the similar situation. Equally if you look at this photo of the girl in the red dress in Porto in Portugal it's a warm photo it makes you feel warm it makes you feel like it could be a Friday night um, in the summer girls going to the bar you see the Heineken sign as well and it feels like a summery warm nice evening. Finally, a photo that has a story could be also one that evokes nostalgia and takes you back to a particular point in your own life. So a good example of that is if you see this photo of the uh, carnival, the, the carousel thing going around. For some people, it can take them back to when they were a child and they were going on these rides late in the evening. Of course, this is very individual because for some of you, you might look at that and think, well, I don't really get it. There's nothing there that connects with me. And that's absolutely fine. And just building on that, all of these images Images and my feelings and thoughts about them that I've just shared they're just my opinions you might have different opinions about them and that's absolutely fine that's one of the beauties of photography is two people can look at the same image and maybe walk away with a different story or a different emotion At this point, you might be saying, well, this is all well and good, but how do I actually go about telling stories? What can I do that's very easy and clear to follow that will allow me to at least try and tell stories with my photos? Well, the harsh reality is in order to get one photo with a good story, it's actually pretty difficult because for the most part, it's luck. And for the most part, it's being at the right place at the right time because even if you know how to light your scene, how to compose, how to spot subjects, how to people watch and see if there's anything interesting happening, how to use your camera blindfolded, you still have to be at the right place at the right time. And the only thing that will increase your chances of being lucky is just spending more time outside, which is all well and good for a small portion of people who have that time, but for most of us, we just simply don't have that. So instead of putting all of my eggs in one basket, instead I aim to tell a story using a series of photos or a photo album. On their own, these photos will probably be just okay. A few of them will be very good. Some might not be as strong. However, when you put them all together collectively, the project at the end is strong and tells a story about a particular location, place, or event. Ultimately, this is designed to put the control back in your hands and even allow you to shape the story that you tell with your series of images. Typically, my photo sets will consist of between three and nine images. I found that any more than that, you can get a bit lost with what's actually going on. And the sweet spot is between kind of five and seven photos. The first image that I would go for is the establishing shot. This photo sets the scene and tells the viewer where you are and what to potentially expect. This could be a cityscape a landscape, a busy street, or any other scene that tells the viewer 
what's going on and roughly where you are. Typically, I would shoot this a little bit wider and out of my Fujifilm lenses, the 18mm f1.4 is what I would use for most of these shots. The second image is the subject shot. This photo tells the viewers what interesting subjects are within the scene. The subject can be a person, a building, an animal, a car. It doesn't really matter. You're the best judge of what's interesting within the location that you're in. Typically, I would shoot this a little bit tighter and I would either use the 18mm f1.4 get closer or crop in or I would use the 33mm f1.4 and hang back a little bit. The third and final type of photo is the detail shot. Now this focuses on something interesting and unique within the location, within the scene that you would typically walk past and not notice but by having it within the photo set it just adds another layer of interest to the images. For this I would use the 33mm f1.4 and either get closer or crop in. Now of course you can use a say 16 to 55 or 24 to 74 frame zoom lens and cover all of this plus more. However, it doesn't necessarily make the experience more fun. Personally, I enjoy being able to move around with a prime. However, in many cases, a zoom can make it easier to get all of these different images. Now it's time for a quick shout out to this video sponsor, Squarespace. They gave me a platform to make my own online portfolio so I can share my photos outside of social media. Squarespace also allowed me to give my photos context by turning them into written blogs. This allowed me to elevate the quality of my work, rank in search, and provide others with value. If you always wanted your own corner of the internet, may I recommend using Squarespace as your tool of choice. If this is something that interests you, click on the link below for a free trial and then 10% off your first purchase. Thank you to you for watching this bit of the video and thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring. Of course, theory is all well and good, but now let me show you a few examples. The first example takes us to Brighton Pier on a very sunny winter's day. Now, the establishing shot is of the pier itself. I was standing on the beach looking at the pier and I got this particular photo. So straight away, you can tell you're by the sea, you're by the pier, there's a fun fair, and you have a good idea of what type of environment or scene you're in. The second photo is of the roller coaster on the pier itself. I particularly like this one because there's like a bird in there as well, which was good timing, sun coming through the car there. And in general, it's actually a pretty good photo that I'm happy with. This is a subject photo. And this shows us clearly the subject on the pier, which in this particular case is the roller coaster. The third type of photo is another subject photo, and this one shows you the view from the pier. In this particular case, it's the two surfers and the wave in between them. I actually love this photo. It's probably my favorite photo from that trip, and it definitely evokes a surfing seaside type of feeling. Now, this was freezing cold winter, but if you color grade it warm, I'm sure you can get a more warm feeling. And the final detail photo is of the teddy bears and the Brighton bag in the shop window. I think it was one of the gift shops. And this really just glues the whole set together because as you're walking up and down that pier, you will see this scene very often because you'll be walking past the windows. Not to mention it also clearly labels and states where you are. The second photo set is actually a bit more nature themed, but the concept is still the same. For this, we're going to Lake Bled in Slovenia, and the opening establishing shot is the one that we've all seen many times, which is overlooking the entire lake with the island in the middle. This was actually a pano that I had to stitch together because I couldn't go that wide using the lens I had at the time. Now, is this a typical postcard tourist photo? Yes. However, does it clearly tell you where you are? Yes, the second photo can be a bit of a cross between the subject and another establishing shot, and that is of the little pier or the jetty, whatever it's called, overlooking the lake, big clouds in the background, mountains, and people chilling. Straight away, it tells you it's the summer, but also tells you you're probably somewhere in the mountains by the lake. It might not be all that warm, and those big storm clouds in the distance, it might be raining later. Now, the next photo is the first of our two subject photos, and it's of the guy and the tourist boat. I was so lucky to get it without any tourists on it, and also with the red top and frame it between the trees. I was actually standing on the um, island itself next to the church, shooting through those trees. It's very clear what the subject is. It's very clear where you are. You're still connecting to the fact that you're on that lake and you can see the boat in more detail. Now, talking of detail, the next subject photo is 
the same thing. It's actually the same guy, probably, but it's the tourist, tourist boats coming in into the island. And this makes you feel like you're standing there because I was literally standing there taking that photo and it gives you an idea of what these boats look like up close and what the tourists look like sitting on the boat. Now we're moving on to the detail photos and the first one is of the trees and the little clouds behind to signify that we are in nature. Is this a particularly strong photo on its own? Of course it's not, but within the photo set, breaking those up, it just adds an extra layer of some interest that you could look at. Same can be said for this photo of the cloud. I just use the telephoto zoom to get up close to that cloud and it just shows you the scale of the clouds that you would get within that environment within the Alps. And for the final example we're going to Istanbul. So the opening, the establishing photo is Galata Tower. Next photo is actually a bit of a subject one as well as an establishing one, but it's of a reflection of these two guys. And then in the back, you can see Galata Tower as well. So this connects to the first image. Now, moving on to more subject photos, we have these two guys who were swimming in the Bosphorus. Obviously, it was April, it was a little bit chilly. They don't look particularly warm. And then another subject is, of course, the cat. Istanbul is famous for its cats. Moving on to a few detail photos, we have the silhouette of this guy who is cooking, the, I think the chestnuts, I believe they're chestnuts, but obviously on its own you think, yeah, it's a cool photo, however, within this photo set, it just connects you a bit more to where you are. And the final detail photo is of the Turkish coffee, I forgot the correct name from them, please write it down below, but the things that you make Turkish coffee in, which again, on their own, it's an okay photo, but then within this photo set, it just kind of cements the fact that you're in Istanbul. Okay, that's all for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it, and please let me know in the comments what do you think. Is it something that you already do? Will you try this? Do you like this idea? Or is there anything about this concept that I've just shared that you disagree with or you dislike? Again, I wanna hear all opinions. That's what the comments section is for. But for now, I just wanna thank you for watching, thank you for your time, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.